Hello, everyone. Welcome, finally, to the second Spin It Social Hour update. Wow, uh, that was a lot of work. We had some technical problems with Facebook, or I should say Facebook had some issues with me. Uh, I think someone was trying to hack into my account, and lo and behold, I got disconnected and blocked. So I did everything within my social media powers, and I worked it and worked it and worked it, and here we are. And Stefan is on the screen. Uh, Stefan, welcome to the Spin It Social Hour. Uh, I wanted to have you right on so we could get this started because, um, you know, uh, what a what a snafu that was. How are you today, Stefan? I'm very good. Sorry that I'm texting while I'm talking to you. Although I have so many I'm flattered no. people want you to know if we're on or not. I think everybody can understand uh, these things happen. This is the nature of live streaming. And uh, sometimes these technical problems in this world are going to happen. People in bigger companies have had bigger issues. So, but we made it. That's I can right. it up. We are now streaming live to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. So, if anybody uh, out there thought that we weren't going to get this done, we got it done. So here we are, folks. Um, I have uh, been doing the Spin It Social Hour now. Um, I'm going to take Stefan off for one second so I can just tell you a couple of things without boring him. I have been doing the Spin It Social Hour now for 38 shows. Uh, never had a problem like that, but uh, I have brought you 38 incredible photographers over uh, since the pandemic hit. And uh, I am going to uh, lower my energy here a bit, deep breath, because the show must go on. But... Um, the Spin It Social Hour is a labor of love born out of care and concern for our photo community. And along the way, I decided that I was also going to start doing these Spin It Social Hour updates. Why? Because I wanted to make sure that we were updating you on the progress uh, and a lot of things going on in, in these wonderful photographers' worlds. And uh, we were going to bring them on every now and then so they can give you these updates on projects, on books, on whatever they're doing. So uh, last uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I brought on Estra Suarez, and we were able to get an update on him uh, and his photography and also this wonderful um, health business that he's doing with his Vice Yoga and other things. But today, I wanted to bring on another photographer uh, that really is just an incredible guy. Uh, we had him on here before. And uh, the show that we had him on before was right here, La Frontera, artists along the U.S.-Mexico border. You can go back and see this on YouTube or Twitter or anywhere. And it was a great discussion. But now we're here to bring on Stefan and have him tell us about his latest work. And here we go. Stefan, it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you. I wanted to make sure that everybody had the, the lowdown on everything else. What have you been up to, man? Good afternoon, first of all, and thank you so much for having me again. Uh, love your show. <clears throat> Always an honor to be here. Um, what ha have I been up to? Well, as everybody knows, uh, work is slow or was slow since March of last year. So during the pand pandemic here in New York, I started to get busy shooting the streets of New York. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... Uh, one advantage of not having too much work is you can follow your own projects. And uh, I got really busy and and, and uh, finally decided to wrap up that project in a, in a book. So it's photography of 2020 from mm -hmm. March to the end. And uh, I decided to go self-publishing, which is uh, unusual for me. I published two coffee table books with outside publishers. Yeah. And uh, that's a whole new experience. And in part, thanks to the pandemic, too, because, you know, I had all the time to think about it and work on it. And uh, it's an ex extremely work-intensive, you know, endeavor. So, yeah, yeah, no, it is. And, you know, well, you put your heart into everything the way all photographers do. And I have to tell you. Um, I love your work and uh, I've, I've, uh, when I heard you were doing this book, uh, it was just great to, uh, you know, hear about it. And I got my copy right here. Uh, it's right here. Keep it, keep it, keep it going. New York. 
Let me uh, fix, pull it back a little here. Here we go with a little smile. Keep it going, New York by Stefan Falke. Now it's available in soft cover and hard cover, right? You have a hard cover with you right there, right? That's right. Well, it's, uh, that's the beauty of Blurb. Uh, that's, that's a platform where I publish right. it. So well, it's, tell, it's, us, tell us about the origin of the project. Tell us about about how you decided that you were going to work this into a book and what it takes to self-publish like this and tell us about, and then we'll go through some of the book. I have a little video clip here we're going to show, but it's, you know, it's wonderful, man, to be able to capture the resilience of New York. Tell us, Stefan, tell us all about it. Well, I try to, as in the rest of my work, as you know, from my Mexico border, uh, U.S.-Mexico border project, uh, it was all about artists and art and, and uh, the positive aspect of living in a binational uh, region with all these problems. But, you know, there are so many photographers out there who focus on the problems. Uh, I, in my work, rather stay on the, you know, as I always say I pick the flowers and in, in, in even if it's a disaster. Uh, I strongly believe in showing the positive side of sides of life uh, without you know negating the problems. But uh, right. you have to show the value of places and, and people and things to make people, you know, engage people and make them think about places and people. Mm-hmm. So, and we are so flooded was like the, in the pandemic, we are flooded was, was the same material, which I'm not saying is not important, but it's all hospitals and, and nurses and doctors and, and uh, ambulances and whatnot. And again, you know, this is very important work. Right. Uh, by the way, there's two works that stand out in this one is Lindsay Adario uh, in the New York Times. That was, that was really, really touching. And the other yeah. one is... Claudia Paul was her uh, series of, of uh, portraits of nurses. You know, there, there's still ways to, to, to get you, and those two series really, really touched me. But at the same time, there's so much out there that, that I think people get tired of, you know, or not tired of seeing it, but it doesn't affect them much anymore. Right. So I'm trying to put a positive spin on things, and uh, you know, if, if if you can even say that in a, in a situation like this, but New, we, York, yeah. New York is still, and, and and this was for the first time in, since I've lived here. I've lived here on and off for 30 years. Uh, this this is the first time you could really see New York. I mean, right. New York without the people is gives you a, a view, a whole new view of it. Uh, you know, you walk around like a tourist. You look up, you look down, you look, you know. Before you had to just watch everybody coming your way because there's so many right. people and so many dangers and, and you know mishaps and so on. Correct. So yeah, you know, and, and and New York is still a wonderful, wonderful city. So I, that's kind of my where I'm coming from. I do not want to do New York anything any harm, you know. Right. And right. I love the city. I came here because I love it. Uh, I continue to love it. And that's kind of what I still want to show, you know, as, as, right. as much trouble as we are in. Well, you know, going going through the streets the way you did, you know, um, and focusing on on a certain, you know, um, aspect of covering this um, in a very unique way. Um, that that's what grabbed me. Um, and then, of course, putting it into into a book and uh, making sure all the photos play well with each other, the page design, everything else. You know, I give it to photographers these days who self-publish because, you know, we're all brands and uh, we we have to take matters into our own hands uh, to get our work out there in a lot of ways these days. And I think self-publishing is an amazing thing. And when I first saw the book, I, I really, I, the size, the format, uh, the way the whole layout is, it's just beautiful. But, um, you know, the one thing I love about you is that you don't just look at Manhattan. You don't look at just uh, Manhattan as New York. You've been you've been to Queens to document, uh, to do this work. You've been to uh, all the way out to Coney Island and other places to do this work. And you've brought it all together to show the real New York that way. And that's really important. 
Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, important to me. And uh, there are certain spots I like to go to, like Jackson Hyde and, and Williamsburg in Brooklyn, where I've lived for a long time. I lived in Brooklyn most of my, you know, living in New York. So I love Brooklyn. Uh, right. And, and now I love Manhattan, you know, I have to, to live in Manhattan. That's really cool too, but it's difficult to get out of Manhattan. Uh, right. Because that's enough, <laughs> enough of it right here. So at Coney Island, and how can you not not include Coney Island? Coney Island is New York, so right. Uh, so that was that was really important. So I've been pretty much all over the place. You don't see all of that in the book because the book had to be limited. One, the only downside about self-publishing is the limitation in in, in price. You know, mm -hmm. the the more pages, the more expensive. Right. The big publishers they they. Do big books for you know 200 pages for the right. same time as I'm selling uh, 62 pages. Right. That's the nature of self-publishing. They print well, the book when you order it. So I have a question for you. In doing a, a beautiful book like this, you know, I mean, it's the perfect size and everything else. Uh, I love the paperback because it's just so comfortable to hold, and the hardcover is beautiful too. But in doing a book like this, um, you you did it with um, with um uh tell me the name of the company again i'm drawing a blank here blurb blurb b l u r b yeah. right right blurb exactly mm -hmm. and uh here we go we got it right here self published uh going through new york with blurb.com and it can be ordered there in doing this i know you by now um i I know I'm sure you didn't shortchange the book based on price. So you, how did you go about picking the right number, the right number of photos uh, with, for this type of book, even though it is costly for somebody to do this? Well, that, that's actually a good point uh, because I didn't limit myself in the beginning because of the price. I mean, that, that becomes a, a, you know, the further you go, it becomes an, an issue. But uh, I, that, that was not my initial limitations. I knew that the book couldn't be like one good picture after another. The, the, the book, right? Like in my other works, the book is a, is a message, is an idea, right? Is 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 uh, is one thing. You know, it's not the single pictures that that give you the feeling of the book. It's, it's sure. It's the you know the fifty nine pictures together. That's right. And the sequencing of the, the double pages is like extremely different. I, I was about to become a graphic designer before I became a photographer. That was my, my goal, kind of. Mm -hmm. I never got to it. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun with doing this, and that's why the self-publishing, I didn't think I could do it, and I'm actually right. suspicious of, you know, every photographer who thinks they can do it. <laughs> Because we usually can't, especially the, the the sorting out the you know the pictures. I mean, Claudia Steinberg, who who wrote the text, the, the introduction to the book, a beautiful introduction, by the way, really yeah. nailed it, and, and and it's just a an amazing text. No, but she really, she really, really I, pictures. So it wasn't just me. No, she really wrote a beautiful, a beautiful intro. Claudia Steinberg is her name, everybody. And, you know, it just starts off so beautifully and says, whenever New York City encounters something big, a blizzard, a hurricane or a heat wave, Stefan Falke takes his camera on the 20 minute, 20 block walk from his home in Chelsea to Times Square as an ever recognizable anchor location. In the early spring of 2020, one of the first days of the coronavirus lockdown in his chosen hometown of the last 20 years, he once again found himself in that restless heart of Manhattan, and it stood still. That's just a little taste of how it introduces the book. And I have to tell you, a beautiful piece of writing by Claudia, beautiful photos by you. Let's give everybody a quick little look at a little video clip we have here to treat them to about the book. It's about a minute, so enjoy this for a minute and we'll be right back. Just a little clip that Stefan did himself.
Uh, I, lo- I love that, man. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Very oh, well done. It was much fun <laughs> doing that. It, it's fun. You did a lot. You got, you got a lot of steps in, too, a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I do. <laughs> no, I know, I know. We even met up, you, you I, and, uh, and uh, you, me, and my, uh, and my co-producer, uh, Jonathan Borstein, who's not here today, but on, our, on my regular show, on our regular show. Uh, we met up in Madison Square Park about, what was it, about a month ago, I think? Yeah, and yeah. about a month ago and maybe more. And uh, we all masked up and got together just to say hello to each other because this has been a long, long year uh, and everything. But, you know, so many beautiful sights in the book um, and so many really, really the color. The color is outstanding. And you made a note about color in the intro, um, or at least Claudia did. Um, and also I reflected on that a bit because you consider yourself a certain type of photographer that doesn't always necessarily rely just on what you're looking at in color, but you talk to us about that, Stefan, about the perspective of photographing, you know, what you did for the book. Yeah. Until just recently, I, 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 color is never, has probably never been the deciding factor to take a picture or to take a picture in a, in a certain way. I, I, when I put up my camera, I see black and white. Right. Not that I see black and white, but I, but I think in black and white. I, I started like, you know, my generation started in the, in the dark room. Uh, I learned photography solely in, in, in the dark room, uh, working on my own bad pictures, <laughs> trying to make them better and loved it uh so i i still see composition i see i see it really in, in, without color and, and then i come home and i'm like wow you know and, and i'm almost offended when people say to me wow look at the colors in your picture i'm like that's not what it is about you know uh it used to offend me now i'm, I'm, I'm it's a little different different because especially since the pandemic started you had you know all of a sudden it's the structures and colors and, and you know, my, my my seeing things really changed a little bit. Uh, right. Oh so yes, once you know, and I'm not saying that when I see a red umbrella that I'm not act reacting to it. You know, I'm not colorblind or anything, but it, it's never the the again deciding factor of a picture for me. Sure. Until, until just recently. You know? So so after you after you decided to self publish and everything um and put out all these beautiful photos which actually uh let's do something else here let's call up um let's bring up your your instagram page and let us give everybody uh you know a few uh a few treats here in terms of um the actual uh photos we went through some of them earlier there and we were showing them, but let's let's give everybody a little taste here of some of the other photos. You know, in in going through in going through self publishing once again with this book and everything. Um, where do you begin? Where do you end? And um, and now comes the promotion part and everything, which I think you've been doing a great job with. Uh, I've seen a lot of great posts about it and everything. How are you spreading the word about it besides being here on the Spinning Social Hour? <laughs> Most, well, it's a big, this is a big factor. On it. Um, and again, I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. All, all of a sudden, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I have, I have too much creative juices going these days. So when the book was finished, uh, I, I, I went immediately out with it and shot the book in places where I shot pictures for the book right and and so the book itself takes on its own life uh, it wasn't even i wasn't even thinking about uh, advertising it that way first but you know then it just just so happens that these pictures look good too you know so and then i started this was before i started shooting video i i, I never thought of that ever and uh then I think in Coney Island, my, my wife walked around with the, with the book and I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> let's do something with it. Um, yeah, I, I noticed, I noticed your, your, uh, your wife is a real trooper. She, she went everywhere with you, uh, uh, helping to uh, come up with new advertisement shots and promo shots. She is the best. She is a trooper, man. Yeah. Um, but 
Um, so, so talk to us for a minute about, so for example, you know, these two pictures here, talk to us about, um, what you were looking for when you were walking the streets to, uh, to capture, uh, the essence of keep going New York and also, um, the, uh, the, the, the context for, for, you know, not the context, but the, uh, the way you brought it all together in designing the pages, uh, you know, with one photo with the other on each back to back page, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that that took me, you know, every book editor can tell you how many how much time they spend on this. Uh, it, it's in part intuition, it's in part you know, I mean somebody once said if you have a double page, if you have a page with two pictures, they have to complement each other. The, the the page itself with the two pictures has to work uh, mm-hmm. somehow, you know. Right. And sometimes you don't even know why they work together, but they just do. Right. Often it's it's graphic elements, often it's the color. In, in, in this case, it's like the, the it's two pictures of the same events, which I didn't really want to do, but it just it just worked, you know. Right. Coming of the ship up there, that that was one of the craziest moments in the you know, when the ship came up the Hudson. I was like, you, know, you still get goosebumps thinking about it. So, uh, you know, and then the movement, I you know, as I call it, keep going, in New York, because after all, this is New York. People still have this walk to the. I mean, it's, only in New York do you see people walking that way. They just <laughs> go about their business, and even if the whole world collapses around them or is on fire or whatever. They're just they're just yeah. gonna go somewhere and do something. Well uh, that's that's the truth. New Yorkers have a certain walk to them. We also as everybody tells me because my New York accent born and bred here, uh we also have our talk. <laughs> but but the walk, the walk, like for example with this photo here, you know, um these two photos here are just absolutely perfect together. And I have to tell you, you know, these two place so perfectly together, you can't get better. Um, and that you found both of these um, these uh, works of art uh, and captured them with those perfect moments of each pedestrian walking by uh, in uh, same space between their legs, um, almost the same exact pinpoint location of each of them right in the middle. I mean, you know, these things just don't happen. It takes a lot of work and patience and perseverance. So talk to us about that in doing this project. Well, finding those two locations was easy because it's both they're both under the same underpass, uh, which is right by the F-stop in, in uh, Dumbo. Okay. York Street. Uh, if, you, if you don't go down to Dumbo but up towards Brooklyn Heights, then you come through this underpass. And so they're on both sides. Actually, I, I almost missed the other side because I was so focused on the, on the black and white one. Uh, each of these pictures takes an hour, two hours, whatever. I mean, I'm just hanging out in these locations. I, I, I got my spot. Uh, I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I want to do. And then I just wait, you know. And, right. And I, in each of these locations you see in the book, I have, I have 20 different people walking through it. Yeah. And it was never about like how they look or what they wear or what they, I mean, I, I would still be waiting there if, if it was about that, but it was about the walk. You know, right. Like, well, you also, you the also, the energy really. Right. You also made a really, or and Claudia did it in her introduction, a very, very profound and very, you know, really powerful statement in the book about that. Some areas in New York were more desolate than others. Uh, in that if you go out to Queens, for example, or Chinatown, uh, both very hard hit by the coronavirus, Queens more than anything. I mean, Queens became ground zero for a, for a while, uh, yeah. of the epidemic, uh, of the pandemic. And, um, you know, um, essential workers don't have the luxury of, of sitting home. Uh, they don't have the luxury of, of uh, being at home and not going out and doing what they have to do every single day uh, to serve the rest of the city and be the frontline workers, uh, so to speak, that they are. 
and we thank them for that. You know, and so you you both made a point of that in the introduction. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and especially Jackson Heights and other places in Queens and, and Chinatown, uh, for that matter, which right. is kind of underrepresented in the, in the book. That, that was another hard decision. Um, yeah, I mean, people don't have the luxury. I mean, you know, people don't live uh, in, in, in big apartments and, and uh, can just hang out there for a year. You know, I mean, they... they Jackson Heights was really, really busy. Right. Uh, the streets were busy. And no, absolutely, like, absolutely. They were, they were very, very busy. And you know, I'm not judging that in, in, in any way or form, but it, it's a, it was a big difference being there or other places than you know being in Manhattan. Yeah. All yeah. No. Necessity, all of necessity, I would say. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, there were you covered many, many different areas in the city, as we said, and as you've just uh, talked about, but including Jackson Heights and Chinatown uh, and everything. But the one photo that caught me as soon as I saw you working on this body of work, and I'm I'm thrilled and I'm honored to have one of your prints right here um, that I that I have in my possession, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, this photo here should be in a museum because it is absolutely stunning uh, with, with this incredibly well-dressed gentleman. Um, I'm trying to position it just perfectly here. There we go. And uh, looking out at the Empire State Building, it is just stunning, and I'm proud to own it and have it. Um, what made you, for instance – you know, walking the streets is one thing, but you also had the, the inside, you know, you thought about it a lot and you actually ventured up to certain spots to get a picture like that to include in the book, because that is one of the more different photos in the book, whereas many of the other scenes are street scenes. Um, talk to us about that. Yeah, and then putting it on the cover uh, was kind of daring because... That's right. He's not going anywhere at <laughs> that in that moment. So I, I just thought this is the most, you know, a cover is a cover. It, 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 it catches you or it doesn't. Right. I, I thought this was just the right picture to catch your attention, you know, and then, then putting the, the bold writing right above it, uh, you know, gives you the Gives you the message, I guess. Uh, oh, it, it is just stunning. I mean, he's. I could show the back. There's somebody walking. So. That's right. So here we have the back of the book, and there's the front of the book. So yeah. Stefan will hold the the back up there, and I'll hold the front up. But you know, it's definitely a book that you want to have in your collection uh, about about the the early phase of this pandemic and the the feel to the streets. Uh, I mean, there were many photographers out there, uh, you know, braving it to take pictures of the isolation, you know, the, the empty streets of New York City. Um, even a couple of my students uh, did work like that at FIT. Uh, one of my students, Adam, did a, a great uh, his, uh, his handle on Instagram is Adam the kill for, <laughs> and yeah, very innovative. You can't forget that one. Adam the kill for, he, uh, did some of these great, um, uh, triptychs of, of Times Square and, and a couple of places. But anyway, um, you know, how did you, after a while, uh, bring this to a close and say, okay, now I have enough to publish a book. When, when did that moment come? I mean, because that's a hard thing to do is to decide when uh, with a project like this, especially where you're walking around a lot and you know, there's going to be more photos when and more moments of, uh, of, of this, uh, of this uh, subject, when do you call it uh, not quits, but when do you say it's time to publish? Well, usually I have a, a huge problem with that. Uh, at the moment. <laughs> U.S. Mexico border projects can't find an end, and, and you know that, and that's okay because the border will be there longer than I will. Um, that's a great question, by the way. Does this general Laurie uh, L. Anderson Barbada? I'm, I, I shouldn't presume it's Laurie. Sorry, uh, uh, 
L. Anderson Barbata asks, does this gentleman actually on the cover of your book know that he's on the cover of the book? Does he? Nobody will very soon. I know who he is. So. <laughs> oh, you do know who he is. Okay. Okay. And how did you find that out? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm lucky. I asked somebody because he was there in a, in a function and I couldn't talk to him, but uh, uh, I, I, I found him. Okay, well, Rose says it's a great book cover, and I agree. Uh, I think you picked the perfect photo for, for this book. Now, that that must have been the most, I, I would presume, that's probably the most difficult decision, right, is picking the front cover. For some reason or another, I, I didn't even play around with it. That was my picture, and, and, and I knew it had to be bold writing, and, and that was it. I, I had less problem with the cover than with sequence and sequence. Oh. The thing, the the pictures inside. Okay. The back, the back picture I changed a lot, uh, but came always came back to the picture that I used. Uh, the inside was far more difficult. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. back to the question, uh, the the ending of the year made it easy for me to end the project. It's it's not ending, by the way. I'm still out there shooting. Sure. Now, now it's more about the the, the restaurant out, outdoor structures and and, but I'm still kind of try to find people walking through my frame, you know. Uh, but the end of the year, the ending of the year, the, the sense uh, that things would change, uh, which now we know haven't <laughs> yet. Uh, you know, there's no. hope on the horizon that wasn't there just a month or two earlier. Uh, you know, vaccinations. And there, there's, there's something in the air, but... Yeah, the ending of the year, the literal ending of that year, two thousand twenty, made it. Uh, and you would think I should have published it before Christmas, but I just wasn't ready. Right. And, and, you know, I could have forced it, but it wouldn't be the same book. It wouldn't have been the same book. Right. So uh, these things just happen the way they happen. Right. Well, you know, definitely a, a deciding. We, we see Rachel running is here, and uh, you, we know that she was part of your uh, other project that you worked on that yeah. we featured here on the Spin It Social Hour, which was uh, La Frontera, which I'm going to show it right here once again. I'm going to take this off so this way uh, we can show it in, 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 uh, in full here. Um, but the thing is that this show was fantastic, and it was great because um, – you know, we were able to discuss another huge project you work on. I'd love everybody to go to YouTube or anywhere uh, and find the Spin It Social Hour on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Find this episode uh, of um, the Spin It Social Hour and make sure that you check that out because, you know, you worked on that project for eight years. But this is your latest work. Yeah, Keep, go yep. Keep going, New York. and. Time. And we're going to make sure that New York keeps going. Uh, we're all going to keep pitching in and doing our part and making sure that we keep our spirits up, that we stay safe, that we mask up, uh, that we get our vaccine. Hopefully uh, many people are getting it. Uh, hopefully more and more will be getting it. Uh, we know this is going to be 2021 has not it's not gotten there yet, but we're working at it. And, you know, Stefan, I have to tell you, it's something like your book uh, it, and your photos. Uh, you know, this book says it all. Uh, the title, Keep Going New York. And it's inspirational. And you know what? It's just what we needed at this moment to make sure that that we have something else to inspire uh, us, us with. So tell people the different avenues of opportunity where they can get this. And then we're going to say good afternoon to everybody and um, and let everybody find your book and hopefully buy it. Well, if you go to one of you know my, my Instagram handles or my website, uh, it, it's, it's, it has its own gallery there, or blurb.com um, or Facebook. I mean, if you find me, you find the book. I mean, I'm, I'm all over the place with it. I hope I'm not annoying too many people, but, you know, that's another thing. If you have to self-advertise, then, then, you know, there, there's great opportunities these days. And, and, yes. and a big shout-out to digital photography and, and, and online and all that. For me, it's like the big box of crayons had been opened and I can do whatever I want. I mean, well, creativity-wise, 
it, well, it's awesome. If I can make a book and advertise it and, and shoot a video about it and, and doing all that all by myself, yeah. then, then everybody can. You, know? you did a lot of work on it. And I gave you, I wanted to give you an extra, uh, we went, it's the 15 minutes, spin a social hour update. We're at 35 minutes, but oh, I wanted, no, but I wanted to give you the extra time because to talk a little more about it. And I wanted to ask a few more questions because we had that technical snafu probably threw off a few, a few viewers today, but the show went on and we made the update went on and we want, I wanted to make sure that I help you get this information out there because the project speaks to me as a born and bred New Yorker. It speaks to me as somebody uh, like all of us who are living through this right now. We've lost too many people way too many people and our hearts go out to everybody and Stefan's one of these people that I've come to get to know who's all about being very proactive and uh, doing the best work he can do and make it inspirational and that's what this work does and a final note though I wanted to make a note here that this beautiful photo that I own here um, that Stefan sent, uh, sent me and also um, any of his prints from the book and also any of his prints, period, are available um, through his agency. Uh, tell us quickly about your agency and how they can find uh, your photos and purchase them if they wanted to decorate and have them in their home. That's a good point. The prints I'm selling myself, but the pictures for publication are available at, uh, in the U.S. Okay. Redux pictures. That's right. The, the archived material uh, for for magazines and and uh, other publications is <coughs> through Redux and Life in Germany, which is my main agency, L A I F, um, which is represented by Redux. So they work together on it. The prints, if you go to my web website and you click shop, you'll find uh, everything you need. <laughs> if you have a big spot above your sofa and you need to fill it, uh, hit me. Hit me, <laughs> hit me. Well, well, the thing is that, you know, I wanted to make sure that people know because I, I tell you, the print that you use, that I have is just so gorgeous. Um, I, I really think it's just, uh, um, it's one of the pictures that I've ever owned and um, I can't wait to get it framed. I haven't been running around as much, um, you know, being able to, um, you know, with the pandemic, I'm limiting my stops. So a framing shop right now to me is not essential. So I'm keeping the, it's really, I'm that serious about it. Um, but the photo is gorgeous. I keep it well-preserved and everything. And uh, L. Anderson Barbada says, and a great document of historic time in New York City. Surely mm -hmm. it is. And uh, as Stefan says, his photos are available through Redux for publication. And let me uh, show you right here. Uh, this is Redux Pictures right here. You can check them out and you can find them um, right at Redux-Pictures.com. If, if you are okay. a professional user for, for the home. Right. For the home. For the home. You can, right. For the home, you can approach <laughs> Stefan. Exactly. Exactly. For your home, you can approach Stefan. And for uh, for uh, pictures for publication, please check out Redux. Anyway, folks, uh, so we're going. Shout out for uh, Carl Seiters, the Lux Lab in New York. He's doing all my printing. Okay. Okay. Lux absolutely. Lux absolutely. Absolutely. A shout out to the printer. Uh, no doubt about it. But I'm going to end this show in a second here. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know about my sponsor real quick. All right. And one final thing is I want to tell everybody before we say goodbye is I wanted to let everybody know that this Thursday, February 4th, with no Facebook tricks at the beginning of the show, <laughs> The Spin and Social Hour is going to be on February 4th, this Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm bringing on a really great photographer. Her name, big, big fan, a supporter of the show from Allentown, PA. He's done so much work on the steel workers industry in Pennsylvania, in Bethlehem, uh, the plant there. 
Um, he has some really historic photos, and it's going to be a great show with a lot of history, some surprises, uh, and uh, just some real history to grab a hold of, given the nature of the steel industry in this country and how this country was built uh, in many ways by some of these great men and women who worked in these plants. So, folks, thank you for tuning in for a Spin It Social Hour with the great Stefan Falke here. Uh, Stefan, I'm going to tell you, you keep going just like New York needs to keep going. And I want to thank everybody. And let's say goodbye and take care, everybody. Okay? Be well. Bye-bye. Thank you for seeing this Spin It Social